It's the Master Iceman, and I'm sorry about the noise in the background, but that is the beautiful sound of ice makers running. And it is a beautiful sound. I call myself the Master Iceman because I was delivering ice, brought a bunch of ice in, and the bar manager's putting it into the freezer, and out comes a brewmaster saying, oh, we don't need that much ice. I'm like, that's fine, I'll take it back, but I'm still charging you for it. He looked at me, he looked at the manager, looked at me, and he walked away. And ever since then, well, that and the fact I get to create my own business cards, I call myself the Master Iceman. And today, today we're talking about the plenum assemblies on the Hamer 540. This is the meat and potatoes of your top seal. And the key with the plenum assemblies is we do not want air leaks except right in these little holes here. Okay? And so one of the challenging things is to put these together without getting this guck everywhere. And I really should scrape it off, but you know, I don't always have time and look pretty or functional. And I prefer functional versus scraping this off and doesn't matter to me because if it works, that's all I'm really looking for. You should always have a backup set because these take six to eight hours to cure. A lot of times it's in a cold room. They'll take longer to cure. These will burn out. You should learn how to use a voltmeter for figuring out which one of these burn out when you get an alarm. An electrician can show you some basic skills on a voltmeter, which will help you determine when you need to swap one of these out. And so it's really easy just to swap out a whole unit and uh, then at the comfort of your desk, you're able to do this in a little more relaxed environment, okay? So some things to note, steel, steel, aluminum. You can see right here, I stripped out the thread. Now, it's not a huge deal when it's the back one because you can actually run a, a skinnier bolt through and still secure it. You can run it with three, but ideally you wouldn't have to. Okay, so you always got to be careful there. And in here, if you strip it out here, you're screwed. So ideally, you'd use a, a torquing wrench. I use fill and touch. I don't over tighten. Okay, so always be careful of that. Um, sometimes when you have these actually hooked up, you may want to get welding tips. Okay, here. If you don't know welding tips, trying to do this with one hand. Skinny little wires you stick in these holes when you get carbon buildup in here that blocks it. So a welding tool can uh, be useful. And if you're starting to have, see that often, it's telling you have a lot of carbon in here and that maybe it's time to uh, take these apart, okay? When you are taking these apart, the best way to break the connection between the red, high temperature gasket 474 sealant, is twisting sideways. Do not try to do this this way. Same with these, twist sideways. They, they just come apart way easier. Getting these apart is just a challenge. Again, be very careful or you could bend these because they are aluminum, okay? And when you are putting these together, sort of keep in mind where your connection is on the Hamer 540, it's right over here. So I'd probably flip these around in an actual setting. I'd put my, uh, thermostat here and my plug over here just flip it around okay um but when you do rebuild these okay connect this so like this is um similar to what's on the machine okay air hose to a little compressor do not over compress like don't, don't do like 100 psi the machine runs up to 20 feet 25 psi you want to run between 7 and 15 PSI on the actual machine. You don't need a lot of air. All you're really doing is getting some leak check. So you plug that in and you're trying to see if you got air leaks here, here, along here, here, all along the sides, the plug, right here. You have leaks here because you have holes, right? And if you test it, well, it's on your bench. You don't have to go through the hassle of hooking it up to a machine, then testing it, finding out you have air leaks and taking it off. The challenge with air leaks is to run your top seal. There's a sensor. So if you go down to your regulator in the Hamer 540 that connects to your top seal, 
you'll see a teeny little hose that goes up to a sensor. And that hose and that sensor says, I have to have set amount of pressure for me to turn on the, the heating rods. And that's a safety element they put in the machines because if you were to leave the machine on without air, you could melt your entire plenum assembly and dear gosh, that is just a pain to deal with. I've never done it, okay? Because you can actually bypass that sensor. If someone were happened to break off the little thing, you can bypass it. But again, it just means the people manufacturing or palleting the ice have to always remember there needs to be air in the machine. And it's interesting, okay? If you have too many leaks, what will happen is that little sensor will say, not enough pressure, it'll turn off a bit. Then air will build up and it will turn back on. You'll bring an electrician in and you'll spend a ton of money on an electrician figuring out all your electric stuff is fine. You just have too many air leaks. And so it's something you always have to, to be concerned about. You know, air leaks are just a problem when it comes to the Hamer 540. And so when I get back to this, guys, I always put this on loose like this. I use this to test if there's air leaks here. Once I know it's good, then I'll actually go through the, the process of actually using the red sealant. What's interesting about this is a previous version of this red sealant said you hand tighten, okay, and then leave for a couple hours, then you tighten all the way. Doesn't have that on this. So I'm not 100% sure what is the best way. I guess at the end of the day, whatever works so you don't get air leaks, it's something maybe you can experiment with and let me know. If you have any questions, please reach out. You know, I'm always willing to learn and uh, that's the name of the game, you know, a, a lot of trial and error in life and uh, learning is, is, is really the important thing. They call me, well, at least online, Ernie Iceman. Ernie's the owner and I'm his master Iceman. Please subscribe and tell your friends because who doesn't want to learn about the Hamer 540?